What's going on guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's Rachel here from MakersGonnaLearn.com, your ultimate die cutting community, bringing you another fun and informative video today. Today it's going to be about using and working with photos in design space. This can be scary for some people and nerve wracking if you do not know how to do it. So this is going to be a great video for you all to just kind of ease your mind and make you more confident in creating with uh, photos in design space because they're so much fun to use. Today we are going to be making two little quick projects, uh, but mostly today's focus is on working with those photos in design space. We're going to be using two different materials today. We're going to be using new fun printable iron on and Cricut printable vinyl. So you will need an inkjet printer for today. Uh, so we have a Canon TS8120, which they have quit making, but they did update it. So I will link that one down below as well as all these supplies. Um, Along with that, because we are going to be doing some um, iron-on and vinyl today, we actually do have black iron-on and black vinyl because we are going to be creating uh, some little quotes out of each of those um, using some Makers and Learn cut files. We have over 4,000 of those cut files, by the way, guys. Over 400 fonts, almost 500. Amazing printable guides, access to a member-only Facebook group, free e-courses, commercial licensing, and more. So if you guys have a die-cutting machine and you want to use it more, or you want to get motivation or education to use it, please click the very first link in the description below to see how you can become a member of Makers Gonna Learn. Also, along with that, we're gonna be using an Easy Press, an Easy Press mat, and then the little projects we're making today, we're gonna to be making a little frame that has a photo on one side and a cute little doggy quote on the other. We're also going to be making a little decorative towel with a doggy photo on it and the word love with the O as a dog paw. Uh, so I can't wait to get into this tutorial and help you guys learn how to use uh, photos in design space because I know it can be tricky to think about. The first thing I want to tell you guys to do is you need to get the photos on your device. So. There are several different ways you can do that depending on what device you're using. The easiest way is to mail them to yourself, email them to yourself. So uh, here on the screen that you will see in just a moment, I have emailed these photos to myself or really to Tanner and Courtney, but I popped them on the desktop and that's where you'll begin. Now, if you're using an iOS device like an iPad or uh, your iPhone, you can just use the ones in your camera roll and upload them or you can like on your iPad, have them there. You can send them from your phone to your iPad if you don't have them on your iPad. So it's really, really easy to do. However you can do it, you have to get the photos that you're wanting to use onto the device you use for design space. So that's on you guys. Make sure that that can happen. And once it happens, you're good to go. Now we'll go ahead and start in the tutorial. Here are the adorable projects we're going to be making, guys. This is my little new puppy, Lenny, and he is, I'm sure he's very honored to be the face of these projects today. So just a quick sneak peek over here. I did email these to uh, myself, which was actually to Tanner, and I put them right over here on to the desktop. So all I did was I drag and drop them over to the desktop. So here they are straight from the email right there ready for us. And here's how you'll upload a photo. So let's just say this is a new blank canvas. You'll go to upload just as you normally would and click upload image. And now I just want to preface this by saying photos and you know, design space, it just kind of is a, a rougher mix. It's going to be slow. So don't expect this to be super darn fast because it does take quite a long time. So now you'll drag and drop one of your photos from your desktop and you can see little Lenny there. We want this to be complex. So we're going to click complex. You can click simple. It really doesn't matter. However you want to do it. We, we just have the mindset and we always like to choose complex and now we'll click continue. And here it's really blown out, so don't feel discouraged. You're going to go up to the top right here uh, where your little zoom in and zoom out is, and you're going to click zoom out. And you're going to be able to see your photo and lock it, and you don't really want to do much to it here uh, unless you wanted to create a border around it. So, for instance, if we just wanted uh, just Lenny, then what we could do is we could go to erase here, our eraser tool, and I'm going to make this bigger here just like that. I'm gonna make it bigger than that. There we go. I'll just make it the biggest I can get it. Perfect. So if I make it like this, let's zoom in a bit. I'm gonna go here on Lenny 
and I'm going to click with my mouse and go over with my mouse and then unclick and then I can move around, click back down, go around, Lenny, just like so. And it's okay if the edges aren't super clean yet. You can always go back in and retouch those up after the major line has been made. So just go through here and go around little Lenny, around your photo. Now I'll go here, just go around. And this is completely uh, up to you if you wanted to do this or not. This is not a must. You can feel free to do it whatever way you would like. Uh, some people just prefer uh, to do it this way. It's like I said, complete personal preference. Regarding that, I'm just gonna go around his little paw here. Perfect. You see I got too close right there, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna meet it right there. Now I'm gonna go up here and click zoom out again. And as you can see, he has a border around him. And now what we'll do is we're gonna go over to the left and click select and erase. And now we're gonna click this background here and erase the background as we can. So we're gonna click it, erase it. And the easiest thing to do for this process is simply to go through and erase it with your eraser tool. It just seems like the easiest thing to do. So once you erase most of this, now sometimes you'll have an easier, like a white background or so, you can take your eraser tool as big as you have it, and you can go in here and erase it just like that. And once you have it like that, you'll be able to continue on the saving process with the outline of your puppy. Um, or of course, whatever it is that you're using. Um, so I won't go through the whole process because I feel like this is self-explanatory. After you erase the rest of this, you can go through there and just save, continue, whatever. So we're gonna click cancel and we're gonna redo all of that to show you what we were uh, planning on doing. Upload, insert, complex, continue, you can go on out and see, okay, this looks good. This is how I want it. Now you can click continue. And this is when it's gonna take a little bit longer after you save it as a print and cut image. So you can see here, I don't wanna save it as a cut image because it's just blank. So I wanna save it as a print and cut image. And now I'm gonna click save. Now it's gonna take a few minutes for this to happen. And once it saves, you'll be able to upload it in Design Space. But again, I wanted to mention Design Space is going to be slow with your photos. It's just how it is. So now that it's in recently uploaded, you can click it and insert your image into Design Space. And here it will insert for us. And you can see it's pretty big. So I'm gonna automatically go in here and help it out and make it a little bit smaller. So I just went up there to our height and made it seven inches. And now you can see our little photo in here, all perfect, ready to go. So this is exactly what you would do if you wanted your photo here. Now, there are several things you can do here in Design Space to make this how you want it. You can take a shape here, take a square, and let's say you just want Lenny's head. You can take that square and put it right over there. And before I do this, I'm gonna duplicate this photo as well. Now, once you have his face covered, you can see his little face is covered. You can take this, drag it over both, come down here and slice. And once you slice, you've sliced out that part of the photo. So now you can erase that and erase this and there you have just his little head so you can do that long ways you can do that as many different ways as you want if you want to cut a heart out of his just his little face here you can take this heart just like that and cut out his face and a heart if that's what you want to do I mean the possibilities are really endless with what you have to work with here uh, so do think about that uh, it's really fun uh, one thing I would not do is distort the photo here in design space if you want this thing to be bigger here I would not use this to distort it because as you can see it just kind of looks a little bit weird when you distort it so keep it the uh, 
keep it how it's supposed to be and now let's see even that's a little bit off but keep it how it's supposed to be and just slice it into, into design space with how you want it so uh, for instance, up here you can see our little towel. I purposely chose a funny little photo of Lenny laying down long ways horizontally so that it would fit well onto our decorative towel that we're using. Whereas in this other one here, I wanted it to be vertical so it would fit better onto our frame. So do think about that as well. So next biggest thing that you guys should do is make sure that you've place your blanks here in design space what their dimensions are so for instance this towel this can be a tricky one so the towel i want to measure it while it's folded so while it's folded our towel measures 14 inches long by six and a half inches wide so once i have that in design space here i know how large my photo can be and how large my decal can be same goes with my frame here and this is not including the outer edges of the frame. I'll repeat that. This is not including the outer edges of the frame. This is measured from the inside of the frame with the space I have to work with, not including those wooden edges. So inside I have 9.75 by 7.75. And again, now I know exactly how big I can have my photo and I can have my home is where the dog is decal so cute so it's really that easy to work with photos in design space once you have them in here and you have them sized the way you want to i'm just going to delete that one and work with what we have in here once you have them the way you want to and you know your sizes are correct and everything is properly sized you do not need your uh, representations of your blanks anymore so you can hide those or delete those or whatever you would like to do with those and again guys these cute little decals are simply from makers gonna learn these are two super cute dog quotes that we have and one little tip the reason why this one is lighter gray and this one is black is because I want them both to be black at the end when I place them on my project but for cutting purposes if I were to have both of these black my Cricut would want to cut them on the same mat and for our towel we would be using HTV and for our sign we will be using uh, regular adhesive vinyl so since uh, we're using two different materials we do need those to cut on two separate mats for us to make our lives easier so I changed that color to a gray in design space so our Cricut would know not to cut them together now once you have again everything sized the way you want it your photos are here in design space they look great you've cropped them how you wanted to using your amazing shapes you can go ahead and click make it now you need to be sure you know which material you are using for which project for this particular photo i chose to use this on our frame meaning i need to print this with our uh, printable vinyl so that's what you're going to be doing with this is using printable vinyl so that's what you need to go and load into your printer you can click continue and we're going to be sending this to a printer today now because this is a photo i want this to be crisp clear and a clean great print so what we're going to do for that and this i'm not taking credit for this miss becca is the one who taught me how to do this so i'm going to teach you all how to do this as well uh, what we're going to be doing is using our system dialog and this says important after clicking print your print dialog may appear behind your design space application so what this is going to allow us to do is to basically up the quality of how we want our, our photo printed so now i'm going to click print and then go up here and minimize our um our tabs here and you can see here it popped up for us I probably didn't have to uh, minimize the last one and you can see right now uh, quality is on normal we want to make that quality best and now we're just going to go ahead and click print and once you've had that printed guys again make sure that you did use the Cricut printable vinyl to print that one now we'll go down to our next one and we're actually going to go back up to print because we haven't printed it and click send to printer and we're going to do the exact same thing guys use system dialog and click print now we're going to minus that uh, page and switch our quality from normal to best now we're going to go ahead and print make sure your printer is filled with at least one sheet of the new fun printable iron-on and go ahead and print it 
And now that you've printed guys, this is also very important because all of these guys, every single one of these mats are gonna be cut on a different cut setting. So what you'll do is we're gonna go up here to our print and cut and we have printed. And this one, we, we did a print, if you guys remember, on printable vinyl. So I'm going to search printable and click printable vinyl, done. Now I'm ready to load my machine and cut my material. And once your Cricut has cut that out, you can see it is switched over to number two, our second map, but this is not on printable vinyl. What we're gonna do is re-go and reselect our material. We're gonna type in printable, and this is printable iron-on, comma, dark. So that is what we're gonna be using today. So go ahead and allow that to cut out as well. Once that one is cut, you can guess what we're gonna do again, guys. Go on up here and change our material setting again. If for this one, we have used vinyl, so I'm just gonna type in vinyl, and right here, vinyl, done. Go ahead and let that cut. Now, last but certainly not least, is our iron-on layer. And one thing that you have to do for all of your iron-on is turn mirror on. So we're gonna click that layer here. You can see our little love. We're gonna turn mirror on because again, guys, iron-on comes with its own built-in transfer sheet, which is why you have to mirror it and why you have to cut it shiny side down. So once you've mirrored that, you can click done and go up here to your materials again and we're gonna browse materials and search iron. Everyday iron on, perfect. Now that we have that selected and our mirror is turned on from our mat, now you can go ahead and cut and weed that very last layer. Here you can see our Cricut is scanning those registration marks along the edges of our print and cut here. This is again the new fun printable iron on for dark colors. And this is an amazing technique we love to use. We absolutely love to use print and cut with our Cricut and it does it pretty flawlessly. So here we're just gonna watch it cut out our printable HTV. That was super easy. Now let's go ahead and watch it cut our Cricut printable vinyl. So here's our printable vinyl all printed out for us. Now we're just gonna remove the excess, just like so, and there's our adorable little picture. And now we're gonna do the same for our iron-on here, our printable iron-on, place it on the mat for us. Then now we're just going to remove the excess, just like that. So easy, so simple, and we do have a hack on how to save uh, the bottom of this. You can actually cut off that and use masking tape to tape it to a full piece of cardstock and trick your printer into printing it. So please no negative comments uh, about me wasting the bottom. Um, this is a training video and I don't want to uh, bombard you guys with too much information about everything. So I am simply not doing everything I can to save this because that is not what we're teaching you guys today. So we have both of these printed out ready to go and now I'm just gonna move my mat to the side. And right now we're gonna work on our pillow, which means we need our printable HTV and our iron-on. So here's our little iron-on here. So let's go ahead and get this set up. Our Easy Press is preheated for us, and a lot of people do not do this, but I don't mind it at all. I will actually heat a decorative towel while it is folded. It works just fine for me. So what I'm gonna do is add our little love down here. There's our little love. Looks really good. You can get super picky with it or you can just uh, re-fold um, the towel afterwards. And now just I'm just kind of peeling this up just like that. Easy peasy, peeling that up. And now I'm gonna lay this down right there. So cute. This is gonna be an adorable little keepsake towel. And what you're gonna need for this, it comes in the pack, is butcher's paper. So it comes with a little thin uh, piece of butcher's paper in the pack, or you can use a Teflon sheet if you want to do that. Either way, it's totally fine. So we're gonna be heating these one by one. So we're now gonna just remove our photo. And once we lock where our uh, iron-on is here, all we're gonna do is just heat that up. And we do have our Easy Press preheated to 350 degrees, which is the second heat setting for this little guy and it looks 
like it's done. It looks amazing. This easy press makes easy work of things like this. So now you can just remove that. Flawless. And now we're gonna add our photo up here. So here's our picture, just like that. Make sure you like where it's at. All that good stuff, great. And now you can add that paper right on top. And now just heat that down. And this should be heated for uh, 25 seconds. So we're just gonna continue to heat this. But guys, I'm telling you, working with photos in Design Space is so easy. It is a no-brainer, and it helps you guys be able to personalize so many projects. It's adhering perfectly, guys. Perfect. Now you can just remove your butcher's paper, and there you have it. A beautiful little keepsake decorative towel with your little puppy on it and our little love paw from Maker's Gonna Learn. And now that this is nice and completed, we're gonna move along and use some uh, printable regular vinyl on our photo frame. So guys, here's our frame. I have already cleaned it with rubbing alcohol. This is just an eight by 10 frame that we got from Hobby Lobby and we like to find them 50% off. And this is a really pretty piece of um, paper that looks like whitewashed wood. This was also from Hobby Lobby. It's just a sheet of paper. And here we have our photo and we're gonna do our photo first. And I've already cleaned this with rubbing alcohol like I mentioned, so there's no dust, debris, dirt, or oil from our fingers on there. I'm just gonna remove this like a sticker. And I like to hold two sides like this and be very uh, careful and go ahead and place this down. And once you have your photo on there, we're just gonna move that to the side and we're gonna apply down our vinyl now. So we're gonna remove the transfer sheet, the backing here. So cute, so easy. Now we're gonna bring this in, bring our frame in, line this up and place this down. And once you like where it is, you can go ahead and burnish from the center out. Just like so. And now you can pick a corner and peel up that transfer tape. And now there is your home is where the dog is and our little decorative towel that we have. Now both of these again are made using photos in Design Space. This was again printable HTV and this was regular Cricut printable vinyl. We absolutely love the way these turned out. Guys, how cute are these projects? I absolutely love them and can't wait to use them in my home. I'm glad we got to use some different materials to also get you comfortable using those. We do have a beginner's guide to using vinyl and how to use printable HTV. We have those videos. I will link those down below if you are a beginner and want to know a more in-depth version on how to use those because today's video is mostly about using photos in design space, which I hope you guys are way more comfortable doing now. I love being able to to share this with you and help you guys grow in your crafting journey and become better well-rounded crafters. Thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing content like this. Leave us a comment down below if you have any questions or concerns and as always stay crafty guys. I'll see you later. Bye!